Can you share the screen? Yes, I can hear you. I I hope this I'm audible to you. Uh, you can hear it pretty well, so you just okay. Hmm? Okay, to share the screen okay. and hmm? okay, that's great. Okay, so can you can you share the screen with your presentation, please? Yes. Great. Okay, so the last speaker of this session is uh, Daya Shankar Ushrishta, and we'll speak about quantization of fermionic Schillinger model. Okay, so I hope I can take off. Good. So uh, a very, very good afternoon and a very, very good evening to everybody. And my Heartfelt thanks to the wonderful team of the organizers, my great friends, with Milo, Vladimir, and Mate. All of them are extremely efficient and sincere, I must say. For the younger ones, I can I cannot hesitate in praising them. It's a praiseworthy work that they are doing, and it's very, very impressively going on. All right, so I think I can now come to the topic of my talk for today. And this is on the quantization of fermionic finger model. So by fermionic here, I mean, finger model, people are very well aware. Fermionic originally, in fact, it was written down in Fermi fields. So uh, instead of considering it in the bosonic fields, I would consider it in the original Fermi So the, you see the Swinger model, it's commonly called as Swinger model. It's in fact the vector Swinger model, which is really known as the Swinger model. But Swinger model can be a chiral Swinger model. It can be a vector Swinger model. So uh, I would, in a few minutes, I would explain the difference. But uh, when vector is not used, uh, then usually it refers to the vector swinger model. So, okay, so this model actually describes a two dimensional field theory, a two dimensional quantum electrodynamics of massless fermions. So, the fermions are massless, m into psi bar psi term would not be there. And in the vector swinger model, uh, what happens is that the left-handed and right-handed fermions are coupled to the U1 gauge field A mu, which is the photon field, with equal couplings. And whenever the couplings are unequal, maybe slightly, or then that would be a chiral swinger model. So right now I'm going to, because it's a class of models actually, so I'm going to consider uh, only a vector swinger model. And the model is characterized by its exact solvability, a property which is really ensured by a, by a remarkable feature of one-dimensional fermion systems, namely that there is a correspondence of one-dimensional fermion fields and one-dimensional canonical fields. And this issue was settled in the, in the 70s actually uh, by Lenny, Susskind, Kogut and many other hosts. Of, uh, of theorists around the world. So what happens that the, for example, the Dirac Lagrangian could be given by some um, uh, uh, terms in the in terms of the bosonic field, which happens to be the kinetic energy of some boson field. Similarly, the uh, vector gauge current and the actual vector gauge current, they also could be expressed in terms of the bosonic fields. So this boson fermion equivalence in fact it, as far as i know it works uh, perfectly well for two dimensional uh, field theories but i'm not so sure if it has been established for higher dimension three or four dimensional theories but so anyway the two dimensional theories by themselves are very important 
and if they are written down in bosonic field they become little bit easier to solve and uh, they really provide a a laboratory to test and develop several theoretical ideas and in fact quark confinement was proved convincingly uh, in two dimensional field theories only now let me let me write down the the model itself so this model uh, here it's a generalized model generalized singular model in the sense that this definition that i am giving here it defines uh, vector model as well as the chiral singular model so now the action of the theory uh, is defined in terms of the fields fermionic field psi and psi bar and the bosonic field a mu which is the uban gauge field a mu so the i mean this is just the functional form it consists of this is the kinetic energy term for the electromagnetic field a mu and this is the well known dirac lagrangian but uh, uh, this these models are in two dimensions super space one time di time dimensions so mu will take on value zero and one only so this is a famous dirac lagrangian and these rho matrices are just the gamma matrices of Uh, Dirac. They are expressed by rho mu. Uh, here they are uh, two-dimensional Dirac matrices, and you find that there is a product of this psi and a mu here sitting here, uh, even psi bar along with these gamma matrices or the rho matrices, and a coupling coefficient e r. So that means, and this is a similar another interaction term here. The only coefficient is different. this is er and el so er and el they express the coupling coefficients for the product of these three terms psi bar a mu psi psi bar a mu psi but in between you have the rho mu times 1 plus rho 3 and rho mu times 1 minus rho 3 now let me first define the conventions of my In my calculation so f u nu is the usual field strength of the electromagnetic field d mu a nu minus d nu a mu everywhere mu nu take only two value zero and one and this is the metric tensor that i am going to use the coupling coefficients er and el could also be recombined into a different form like g1 of el minus er by 2 and g2 el plus er by 2 so uh, if we said el and er to be equal then equal to let us say e then g1 would be would be zero and this would correspond to the vector singular model so what would happen this row three terms from here and here they would cancel out and the other remaining two terms would add up so uh, and whenever el and er are slightly unequal or completely unequal Uh, whenever they are unequal then that case corresponds to the chiral singular model so now uh, uh, further this psi bar is the dirac conjugate psi bar is the dirac conjugate and it is related to psi dagger which is the dirac adjoint so the dirac conjugate and dirac adjoint they are re related through this rho zero matrix and You, these two expressions are conceptually the same they look algebraically different if you multiply them rho zero here and rho zero here we will find that rho zero square is minus 1 so you get it minus iota times psi dagger so uh, i choose these uh, particular matrices for for the rho matrix rho zero and rho 1 and in fact Uh, there is a, a small motivation for this is that the string theorists uh, and the people working in supersymmetry supergravity they um, they eventually do uh, work with the fermi fields so uh, and uh, it is their choice and i i i uh, i renormalized my calculations to them so rho zero is this 
and row one is there and one has to check that these row matrices they must satisfy the Dirac algebra where so uh, anti-commutation relations of row mu row nu is minus twice eta mu nu where eta mu nu is divided by this oh, we need not be confused we must always consistently check our things this would look to be plus here if my notation for eta mu nu were different if i choose minus one plus one then this will have to be plus one so one has to be careful okay uh, the only thing while dealing with the fermi fields is that uh, uh, there is a possibility of several minus signs occurring from many places and this one has to watch out. So uh, row three is the analog of gamma five, uh, but there are only two matrices, row zero and row one, and therefore I write it row three, which is row zero times row one. And you find that this row three, in fact, this row three is the is the uh, chiral operator of the Dirac theory, gamma five, analogous to gamma five. So it's a square, you can check is uh, the same matrix times this matrix times the same matrix. So this would be a unit matrix. So it's a unit two by two unit matrix. This is a very crucial uh, uh, expression here. Rho zero is square is minus one and rho one is square is plus one. And therefore the inverses of these rho zero and rho one matrices, they exist, okay? And uh, if one were today, I would not be working with the light front quantization of this theory. But if one were working with the light front quantization, then one will have to construct uh, row plus minus matrices where you will have to take linear combinations of row zero and row one. And then what happens that the inverses of row plus minus do not exist. So there is a different formalism for that. Uh, which is due to Philip Mannheim, Peter Loden, and Stan Brodsky. And I think last time I had used it in my talk, but right now I am working only with the instant form quantization and not light front quantization. So I do not need rho plus and rho minus. So I need rho zero and rho one, and the squares are non-zero, and therefore their inverse is exist. And this is this is fine. Uh, well. This I need not highlight, but uh, I mean chiral operators. You can you can uh, through projection operators you can use this. So chirality for a drag psi is defined through through the operator row three, which has eigen values plus and minus one. Now I I summarize the last two slides into this slide once again, specifically for the case E L equal to E R equal to E. So in that case, though the terms that were appearing in the action and that involved row three, they now drop out. So the, these terms and these terms, one is coming with plus, one is coming with minus, they will drop out. And so you are left with only one E, which is the uh, which is equal to E L as well as E R, because this is a vector symptom model. And so this is your usual Dirac Lagrangian. This is the kinetic energy of the electromagnetic field. And this is the interaction Lagrangian. So in fact, we are talking about the QED theory. It's a two-dimensional quantum electrodynamics theory, where this is the proper uh, interaction term. Now, let me, so uh, after we, after defining the vector swinger model, let me try to construct this model from more basic fundamental uh, beginning. Namely, let me consider the Dirac Lagrangian. And you see, this is the, this is the standard Dirac Lagrangian, but I have written it in two dimensions. And one can check what kind of a symmetry this theory has. And this theory is seen to have a global symmetry. So psi goes to exponential of minus iota, some epsilon, some gauge parameter times psi. But this epsilon is a constant. It's a constant phase. And because the epsilon is constant, and therefore 
this transformation is global and not local. So uh, I would like to have local transformations. Obviously, uh, theories with local transformations are more rich in physics contents. So there is a standard procedure due to neodonis. How to how to gauge? This is called as the gauging the global symmetry into local symmetry. And here I would like to 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 gauge the global symmetry of the Dirac Lagrangian, which is given by this, into a local symmetry like this. And obviously, I can add the corresponding term for the transformation of the electromagnetic pool standard. And so, then I construct, end up with a QED theory. How do I do it? Uh, this is a standard procedure that in the first place, I have to replace the partial derivative del mu by a covariant derivative d mu, which is defined through this. Plus or minus is your choice. It does not matter physics-wise. Physics remains the same. So... So first step is to introduce the covariant derivative in your action uh, under consideration, which is the Dirac action. And then that theory would then involve electromagnetic field or U1 gauge field as well. However, it would not be dynamical. So I must add the kinetic energy term for this U1 gauge field. And that is this. And now when I substitute the value of d mu, then I get this term, which is the interacting QVT theory back to the same same uh, chiral uh, vector symptom model. So I think with that sets the scale for my, that defines my model properly. And then, uh, then analyzing it becomes easier. So I have two pieces in my Lagrangian or the Lagrangian density. I sometimes use it for Lagrangian or the Lagrangian density, but calligraphic symbols are always densities. If you, if you integrate them over the entire space, you get the, the Lagrangian. So uh, this is the bosonic part and this is the fermionic part. This is the Dirac Lagrangian, this is the interaction QVD Lagrangian. And we have, we have seen them in two different ways that they must be like that. All right, so the fermionic Lagrangian for the later convenience, I would like to split it into two parts or just rename them. So this is the Dirac Lagrangian and this is the interaction Lagrangian. I further would highlight that the Dirac Lagrangian could be written alternatively, equivalently in two different forms. So what happens if I find the difference of the two, if I calculate the difference of the two, I will see that this is a total divergence. So this is the Lagrangian density for if you are writing the action, then you have to integrate it uh, uh, over the entire space time. And then this total derivative term, DBU, JMU would simply vanish, and then fourth theory would be completely uh, invariant. Okay, completely. So now, uh, so I mean, they would be identical. Okay, the total derivative term would disappear. And this and these two theories they would give the same, that is what I, we will see in the subsequent slides. Now, we, uh, so I write this L1F now, and I write this at L2F. Interaction Lagrangian, I have separated out. So this is the same, it stays the same. This I am doing for on purpose, because I want to obtain the canonical moment as from here, and from here, they would look algebraically different. But I will show at the end that the physics, does not change, physics remains the same. So my complete Lagrangian is sum of the two, bosonic plus fermionic, this is the bosonic part, which I have written in the component form to be uh, like this, one half del zero, A one minus del one, A zero whole square. And uh, the Fermi part of the Lagrangian could either be L one of or could be L two F. I would work with both of them and at appropriate places, I will show their equivalence. So uh, we also need a line element or the invariant length is square. So in the finite form, this would be S square, which is eight times mu x mu x mu. In the component form, it becomes x zero square minus x one. And this the same expression, but in the infinitesimal form. So this is in the infinitesimal form. Metric tensor is then set, it is, the same for both of them, which is plus one and minus one. 
and it has been the same way and i wrote down the drag algebra for the row matrices it was just the same okay so perfectly fine now let me write down the canonical the, let me write down the canonical momentas obtained from l1 and l2 first first of all i write it down for l1 so pi 0 is 0 and pi 1 is non zero and there is a the velocity here del 0 and derivative of a1 so this will not give me any constraint however this gives rise to the uh, dirac primary constraint pi 0 equal to 0 now let me see what happens with the fermionic part of the lagrangian first i work with l1 f which is uh, this form and uh, if i take the derivative as i said because of the fermi fields we have to watch out if we receive they are the what are the places from where we are going to receive minus sign so if i take time derivative of this term this del zero psi has to be shifted here it has to cross psi bar and i pick up a minus sign and here there will be del zero of psi so i accordingly obtain this result which equivalently could be written as a minus of psi diagram and pi bar as you see here this is the derivative time uh, with respect to the time derivative of psi bar and there is no term here that has del zero of psi bar here if you give mu the value zero then this is time derivative of psi but there is no time derivative of psi bar so this yeah, is yeah. zero you have five yeah. minutes you have so, five minutes so okay i i i speed up so this, these are the two constraints that I obtain in this theory. And if I demand that the, the constraints be preserved in the course of time, then I would get the Gauss's uh, second constraint. Now, so by looking at that, it, it is clear that uh, pi and pi bar are behaving like independent fields because one is cannot be obtained from the other. The same is true for psi and psi bar. They are behaving as independent. And if I do, the, so these are the constraints in this case. Now I go to L2F and I find that this is minus one half of uh, psi diagonal. And this is, now in this case, the pi and pi bar could be obtained from each other. So in this second formalism, uh, these are pi and pi dagger and they are they can be obtained from they can be obtained from each other so and what you have is the, the this is uh, pi plus oh I, i'm missing a side dagger here i'm sorry there must be a side dagger here so this is the this is the first constraint and this is the second constraint now, one has to watch out with the definitions of the Poisson brackets for the Fermi fields and for the bosonic fields. One has to look for this sign. And what happens? The fundamental fermionic Poisson brackets for psi and pi and pi and psi are the same, whereas they differ by a sign minus sign for the bosonic fields. I go to the Legendre transformation and write down the canonical Hamiltonian in the standard way. And this part I can skip. So this I think I have explained that in one L1 case, the psi and psi bar or pi and pi bar or psi and psi dagger and pi and pi dagger, they are behaving as independent fields. Whereas in the second case, they behave as, so what is the physical meaning of this? That in the second case, this suits really the Majorana spinner fields. Uh, Majorana particles are the particles that are uh, antiparticles of themselves. So th there is the physical, physical uh, uh, meaning to it. So I again summarize the, the four constraints in these two cases, and I calculate the matrix of the Poisson brackets of these in these two cases, and this comes out to be identically the same in both the cases, and so its inverse would also be the same, and the gauge fixing choices would also be would work fine because they, they, I have only one set of them. So a zero and a one equal to zero time axial gauge and Coulomb gauge. This gauge could also be written as del 1 a1 and I have checked it mathematically that both yield the identical results. Now this metric becomes 6 by 6 and it could be inverted. Its, its uh, determinant could be found and therefore uh, I could write down path integral as well as the I could obtain the Dirac uh, brackets, non-vanishing Dirac brackets. So uh, this is perfectly fine. So. Uh, this 
this matrix is invertible and therefore this is the i invert it and this is the inverse of this matrix and this looks everything fine and this could be now directly used for the so here i obtain uh, i have written down the equal time commutation relations which are non vanishing in this particular theory in fact there are only two results this and this the the last three results are really identically the same if you convert the variables psi bar into psi dagger you obtain this or if you if you use the definitions of canonical moment as you obtain this so the last three expressions are just the same and this is uh, a1 with e1 is this and uh, mind it if we choose different gauge fixing conditions then this result might be different so it it depends on the choice of the gauge okay and uh, well so uh, i will finish in time don't worry Uh, so now i could i could go to the path integral quantization and make a transition to the quantum theory by writing uh, the vacuum to vacuum transition amplitude from time t equal to minus infinity one vacuum this first vacuum is at t equal to minus infinity and this second vacuum is at t equal to plus infinity so the entire entire spectrum is covered and then you can write down it in using the standard forms i have not uh, shown further uh, details of this but all the all the phase space variables have been taken into account and you the functional major because i have been dealing with two cases simultaneously so in one case uh, the functional major is given by d mu sub 1 and in the second case it is given by d mu sub 2 now there is a very important observation you see uh, these symbols are called as weak equalities they were defined by and introduced by mr paul dirac none other than mr paul dirac and what they mean if pi zero is weakly equal to zero it means it is strongly equal to zero only on the hypersurface of the constraints otherwise it is non zero in the rest of the phase space of the theory and the same same thing applies to each term all of them so when i solve this path integral uh, it would become very transparent to you that results in both the cases would be identical for example you write two point function four point function n point function then the so here i have just defined this uh, weak equality symbol and i have explained what is this weak equality symbol and this actually would lead to the so uh, this i think i have covered already but this needs to be covered yes so uh, the two path integrals even though they look algebraically different but they are really they give you the identical figures and the similarly for the dirac quantization or the hamiltonian formulation the two lagrangians and everywhere the matrices they were looking different but they yield the same identical result this we have checked very very carefully and this at the end i want to give some um, for some remark that i had just mentioned it i wasn't sure if i would cover it in time so this shows the correspondence uh, fermion boson equivalence so the dirac lagrangian really is identically equal to this where phi is some scalar field and this is psi bar gamma mu phi is the well known vector gauge current and which is given in terms of the field phi through this and this is the excel vector including gamma phi so this is the excel vector is current this is also equal to this and this the, the physics contents of both of them so uh, but the the bosonic in the past we have studied uh, the several aspects and several variants of the bosonized version of this model in a series of papers and uh, because of the a shortage of time i did not want to reproduce all those things once again but in the in the slack inspires or inspire have or in our names you can find all those things there is a series of papers uh, using the bosonized uh, versions of these models and i am um, just close to my so uh, i think i'm i'm more or less through with my 
contains. So these are the results for the non-vanishing equal time. Commutators equal time means, so here it is x1, x0, here it is y0, y1, but y0 is now equal to zero. That is the equal time commutation. And this is the same, but here we have anti-commutation relations because they are fermionic fields. So the equal time anti-commutation relation, and these are the, these last three expressions are identically the same. And this is the particle which looks algebraically different in the two cases, but yields it yields the same results. So if you can make use of the definition of the weak equality, it means it implies the same results. But you can more explicitly calculate the two-point function in some particular example or four-point function or five-point function. You will be able to satisfy yourself that it works perfectly fine. So at the end, let me thank the organizers once again for their very kind patience. I think I have overshot by two, three minutes. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you all very, very much. And I would welcome questions if there are any. You're welcome. So let's thank the speaker. I'm for one very short question. Yes. Uh, I, if, if you give me one extra minute, uh, without repeating Milo's question, I would, I would, I would try to answer his question. That his concern, actually not question, but his concern that would these techniques be applicable to theories that are non-Hermitian by construction or by definition? Uh, my answer. Oh, thank you for answering my question. <laughs> No, did I misunderstand? Did I misunderstand your question? Yeah, very well. Unfortunately, there are no short questions. I mean, mm -hmm. the field is too rich and the, the time is limited. So thanks for your short answer to my question. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, you are most welcome. But, but, but Milo, I can assure you that this is really applicable to many wider uh, kind of example from Maybe, I, I will propose that, that you can discuss discuss uh, after closing the session. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Me, thank, thank you again. Thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So now we have a coffee break and you can discuss as much as you wish with the other participants. Yes. So we, we are sorry we are going to miss your coffee now. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.